What's up, guys? Today, we discuss the restrainer on today's episode of the Last Things Podcast. Coming to you once again with another episode of the Last Things Podcast, where we are on a journey to truth. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to come before you today. Last week, we covered Revelation chapter 6, and we are still in Revelation chapter 6. We are, excuse me, we are dealing with the four horsemen. We are sticking with that very first horseman, the horseman on the white horse, which we all discovered last week is the Antichrist. So we are dealing with the Antichrist. We uh, we talked about some differences between how uh, we talked about four reasons why it's not Christ, because people believe that it is Jesus. It's not because Jesus is the one who is releasing him. Uh, Jesus is not bound in heaven. D Jesus sits at the right hand of God. John said this, Jesus opened the seal and this horseman was set free. So we know this is not Christ because Christ would not be bound up in heaven. He's sitting at the right hand of God. So we discussed, you know, there's a couple of other things we talked about as well, but we are dealing with the Antichrist. So I want to kick this episode off by looking at four differences that I, um, uh, that I noticed some other ones that I've noticed. There's a couple that I think I might have talked about. Then there's a couple others I just saw. And uh, so I want to look at those. So in order to do it, we're going to read Revelation chapter six, and we are going to read verse two. Verse two says this, I looked up and saw a white horse. Its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head. He rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at Revelation. Mean, first thing I want to look at, let's look at Revelation 6. Let's, let's look at the first thing that it says about him. He says, this rider carried a bow. Now, if we look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 15, and I'm going to flip to it real quick. Chapter 19, verse 15. This is what it says. From his mouth came a sharp sword, and with it he struck down the nations. He ruled them with an iron rod, and he trod the winepress of the fierce wrath of Almighty God. Now, remember, I said this horseman has a bow. Jesus, we just saw in Revelation 19, Jesus, because Revelation 19 is Jesus coming back, is his second coming. So we can look at Jesus there and we can look at this horseman here, some of the other differences. But we see one main difference between them. Jesus has a sword. This rider in Revelation 6, the Antichrist, he has a bow. And if you notice about the bow, there's no arrows with it. Whenever you speak here, bow, we always think of arrows as well. He has a bow, but he has no arrows, meaning he he's coming as peace. You know, he's coming at peace. He has a weapon. He has a weapon, but he does not have a weapon. If that makes sense. He's coming with a bow, but he has no arrows with it. So it's like I'm coming and without a weapon, so to speak. I'm coming as a man of false peace, as we call it, a man of false peace. So that's one difference between the two. I know I talked about that last week. One has a bow, but Jesus said, the, the Bible says Jesus has a sword. Now, let's look at something else that I looked at that I read and had paid attention before. Now, let's flip back to Revelation chapter six. We're looking at verse two. And a crown was placed on his head. Now, let's look at Revelation 19, verse 12. His eyes were bright like flames of fire, and on his head were 
many crowns. Now, the horsemen of Revelation chapter six has one crown. Jesus has many crowns. Remember way back in the, uh, in the beginning, in the uh, episodes, first episodes in the beginning of the podcast, I talked about crowns and I talked about in the Greek, there are two, two types of crowns. There are diadems and Stephanos. Diadems are, crown, are victor's crowns, a crown for victory. A Stephanos crown is a crown of royalty. So, and I want you to look at something. He rolled out to verse six. So I'm, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter six, verse two. He rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. A crown's placed on his head and he's going to win many battles. He's going to win. He's going to gain the victory. This is a Stephanos crown. This is a Stephanos crown. No, I'm, yes, this is a Stephanos crown, a crown of victory. Jesus, however, when he comes, his crowns are not victory crown. Well, they could be victory crowns, but he's also going to have crowns of, di of diadems, which is royalty crowns, because Jesus is coming as a king. He's going to rule. This is when he comes back, he's going to set up the thousand year millennial reign. So he's going to come back as a king. So he will have a, 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 a diadem crown, which is his crown, which is a ruler crown, a crown of authority, a crown of kingship. This crown that the um, writer has Revelation 6, the Antichrist, his crown is a Stephanos crown, which is a victor's crown, all right? Now, I also want you to look at something. Look at, we got two other differences. Now, we don't know what his garment looks like in Revelation 6. However, if we look over to Revelation 19, verse 13, what does it say? He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Jesus, when he returns, his robe is going to be dipped in blood, meaning it's red. And I'm pretty sure if it looks like it's going to be dipped in blood, I mean, it's going to probably be blood dripping, dripping off of it as well. So Jesus's robe is going to be covered in blood. We don't know what his robe in Revelation 6, this, this uh, white horseman, the Antichrist, we don't know what his robe is going to look like because it doesn't really say. But Jesus's robe in Revelation 19 is covered in blood. So it's going to be a red one. It's scarlet red, color of blood. It's going to be red. And more than likely, like I said, if it's covered in blood, it's going to be dripping blood as well. So that's another thing. And one big difference. Look at the last part of verse two in Revelation chapter six. He rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. Now, I want you to look at uh, Revelation. Now, let's flip back to Revelation 19. And we are going to scroll down. I'm trying to find it in scripture, but we already know what happens. Verse 20. I think it's, is it, no, I'm sorry, is it chapter 20? But we know what happens. When Jesus comes back, you see how this horseman, Revelation 6, is riding out by itself because he rolled out right after they put the, gave him the crown, right? He's by himself. When Jesus comes in the second coming in Revelation 19, he comes back with everybody, his angels, New Jerusalem. He comes back with his army. This horseman here has nobody with him. He's by himself. That's another big difference between those two. And I wanted to show the difference, the correlation, the differences between both of them, especially the one about that robe, man. I thought that was just awesome because I had never really just paid attention to it until then. So I just wanted to show some other differences between the two of uh, the two of Revelation 6 and Revelation 19. Now, let's look at some of the characteristics of the Antichrist. What are some of the characteristics of him? Well, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 9. Uh, this is what it says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 9. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power 
and signs and miracles. He will have some powers. He will have, it says, counterfeit power and signs and miracles. So he's going to be able to do some things. But this, like I said, this is where our discernment has to come into play. We got to have a level of discernment to where we can tell, oh, no, that's not God. Because some people are going to look at the things that he does and they're going to say, oh, that's God. Oh, that's Jesus. He is Jesus. He's the Messiah. They'll believe it because, as the Bible says, he's going to show some counterfeit power and signs and miracles. So we got we to gotta make sure our discernment is in place. So if some of us get left behind, I, I, I'm praying that I don't. I pray if the rapture takes place, I, I'm able to go. But if some of us are left behind, our discernment needs to be in place because we need to be able to see, oh no, that's not Jesus. That's the Antichrist, guys. Yeah, he's able to do those things, but that is the Antichrist, okay? Now, also, let's scroll up to verse three in 2 Thessalonians. This is what it says. Verse four, I'm sorry, let's, let's read verse four. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God claiming that he himself is God. The second characteristic, he will claim to be God. Here it says he's going to sit in the temple and he's going to claim that he is God. So that's another characteristic. First one, he's going to have some counterfeit power and signs and miracles. The second one, he's going to claim to be God, right? Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 13. Verse 6, this is what it says. And he spoke terrible words of blasphemy against God, slandering his name and all who live in heaven. Another characteristic, he will blaspheme God. And not only blaspheme God, he will blaspheme all of those who live in heaven. Now, he's going to say that he's God, but then he's going to also blaspheme the real God and all of those who live in heaven. Craziest thing in the world, ain't it? But that's what he's going to do. Now, I want you to look at Revelation 13. I want you to scroll down to verse 14. See, remember when he said counterfeit sign, miracle signs and powers in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 9? Here's one great sign. Let's read it. Verse 14 of Revelation chapter 13. And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belong to this world. He ordered the people of the world to make a great statue of the first beast, which is the Antichrist, who was fatally wounded and then came back to life. Now, first thing I want you to know, we talk about the beast out of the earth. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, that is speaking of the false prophet. That's the false prophet. That's why it says, that's why it's talking about somebody else doing things for the first beast. The first beast is the Antichrist. The beast out of the earth in Revelation 11 is the false prophet. We're going to cover him when we get to him, okay? But I want you to know that's who that's talking about so you don't get confused. So look what he said. He said, he was fatally wounded, and then he came back to life, the first beast. The Antichrist is supposed to be fatally wounded, meaning he's going to die, but he's going to look like he came back as he's going to come back to life. Fatally wounded, and then came back to life. It's going to be one of those false signs, but he, that do, having that ability, being able to do that, that's going to make people really look at him and say, oh, he is Christ. He's Jesus. He is God. He's Jesus. He really is. He died and came back to life. Now, a lot of people, there's a lot of speculations that when you read that, uh, there's some studies that people are saying it's the systems that have died and they are coming back to life. I personally believe it's the person, it's the man. He will be fatally wounded and he will supposedly rise from the uh, dead, just like uh, the, the word says here in Revelation 14. And which leads me to my last point, my last characteristic. He is a man, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Don't be fooled 
by what they say, for the day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. Verse four, he will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God, not a system, a man. It's a he, it's a man. People believe that this is gonna be like some systems in place. No, this is a man, one man who's gonna do this. And we see it here in 2 Thessalonians chapter three, the man of lawlessness, he will exalt himself. He will even sit in the temple of God. He will claim himself to be God. It's a man guys, okay? So those are some characteristics of the Antichrist. And, you know, we talked about, I skipped over this verse. I want to uh, read this. Second Thessalonians chapter 11, look at verse 14. But I am not surprised, even Satan disguises himself, what? As an angel of light. I meant to bring this up when we were talking about the two horsemen on white in uh, Revelation 6, the Antichrist. Here in Corinthians, it says Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. That's important because with this horseman here, that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing people think because he's, he's, he's on a white horse, white's a good, you know, in the Bible, white is always good. White represents purity in the Bible. So we see this and we automatically assume, people automatically assume, oh man, it's good, it's good, this is Jesus, or this is the gospel, this is a good thing. No, this is not. Because the Bible says Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So here's the Antichrist coming in on a white horse, excuse me, with a bow, with no arrows, going to proclaim himself to be God. So you can see how just because he's in white doesn't mean he's good. Because here in 2 Corinthians uh, verse 14, chapter 11, he uh, says, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light, okay? So I wanted to bring that up. Now, here is where we're getting the part that you guys been wanting to know. Remember last week, I ended the episode saying, I know you guys are gonna ask a question. Okay, if I'm saying that the Antichrist is on earth, which I believe he is, I believe he's on earth right now, why has he not taken over? So I said, I was gonna introduce you to the restrainer. So that's what I'm going to do. So to find him, we need to go to 2 Thessalonians. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians. Let's look at verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We should still be there. Verse 6. This is what it says. And you know what is holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Now, I want you guys to look at something right here. Verse six, and you know what is holding him back. Not, so we see, it says what is holding him back. Something is holding back the Antichrist from taking over. He's being restrained. I, I define restraint. His definition of restraint, deprived of freedom of movement. That is so perfect for this. The Antichrist cannot move forward because he's being restrained. Something is holding him back from taking over. We see it right here, verse six. Let's read it again. And you know what is holding him back for he can be revealed only when his time comes. Verse seven, for his lawlessness is already at work secretly and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Something is holding the antichrist back. Now, I'm reading this in the New Living Translation, but if I was to read in the King James, verse 6, it would say, what is holding back? But if you read verse 7, where it says the one holding it back, 
In the King James, I believe it says until he who is holding him back. I believe that's what it says. I, if I'm right, I believe. You know what? Let me pull it up real quick. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse six, right? Yep. Yes, that's what, yep. For verse seven, for the mystery of inequity doeth already work only he who is now letteth it will until he be taken out of the way. So it's a what, the restrainer is a what, and it's a he. Now, there are people who believe, let's look at some possible uh, identities of the restrainer, because there's a couple. A lot of, so there are some people who say it's Daniel. Based on this scripture that I'm getting ready to read to you, Daniel chapter 12, verse one. Some people believe, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. There are people who believe Michael, the archangel, is the restrainer based on this scripture in Daniel chapter 12, verse one. This is what it says. At that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since the nations first came into existence. They'll look at that and they'll say, because Michael will arise and then there'll be great anguish over. So they'll say, so because they're looking at scripture and they'll say, it's Michael, the archangel. It's not Michael. I don't believe it's Michael. I don't think it is. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, remember, remember in Jude, there's a scripture in Jude, just one scripture, I think it's verse nine, where it talks about Michael and Luce and Satan jockeying for battling pretty much over the body of Moses. And this is what Michael tells Satan. He says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Michael did not rebuke him, rebuke Satan. He said, the Lord rebuke you. So what I'm saying is Michael could have, but he didn't. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Not him. He said, the Lord. I, so because of that, I don't believe that Michael would be holding back the Antichrist right now from taking over. I don't believe it's Michael. I don't. I, I, I just don't. I don't believe it's Michael. I don't. Now, let's look at another one. A lot of people, there's another study that says it's the Roman government. We know that's not true. Why? Because the Roman government is gone and the man of sin still has not been revealed. The Bible here in 2 Thessalonians said, when the restrainer moves out of the way, that's when we'll learn the identity of the Antichrist. If it's the Roman government, Roman government's gone. Roman empire is gone. So we should know who the Antichrist is. But guess what? We don't know. So we know the Roman government is not the restrainer. And then there's some people who think it's Satan himself. Why would Satan hold back the Antichrist? If anything, Satan's going to push him out there even quicker so the Antichrist can go ahead on and begin to accomplish his mission. So it doesn't make sense. How can that be Satan? No, I don't believe. No, we know good and well. This ain't Satan. That's a lie. No, it's not. My opinion, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. I believe it's the Holy Spirit who's restraining the Antichrist. Look at what it says. Let's, let's go back to 2 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians. Verse 6, and you know what is holding him back. Verse 7, the one who is holding it back. But in King James, what did it say? It said he. It said what? It's a what? Verse, two, verse 6, it's a what and it's a he. It's not, it's, it's not, it's a gen, masculine gender, but it's a what, not a who, a what, it's a, it's a what, it's a what and a he. So the only, only person that fits that description 
is the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the interesting part. If you read on that church, the, the, if you keep reading in Thessalonians, they, and Paul says, you guys know who the restrainer is. We don't know, but apparently that the, those in Thessalonica, they knew who the restrainer was. Excuse me. We don't know. We're just assume, assuming, but I believe it's the Holy Spirit. And there's a scripture in, is it Acts chapter, let me see if it's Acts chapter two that I want to pull up. Acts chapter 2, verse, yes, verse 38. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's another scripture I want to read to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. We saw that, right? What Paul, what Peter says, you you know, repent and come and turn to God, and you and be baptized, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Look at verse nineteen. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. We see that. We see that. Why is that important? Because in one of the other scriptures, man, I didn't write that down either. I didn't write it down, man. Yes, it did. It's Ephesians chapter four, verse 29 through 32. You can go back and read it in study time. Only the Holy Spirit has the power to hold back sin through conviction. Only the Holy Spirit. Meaning when an example, let's say you got some friends getting ready to go to the club, y'all getting dressed and they walking out the door, you get ready to walk out the door. All of a sudden you feel some something in the pit of your stomach. You just and, and you hear a soft, still voice tell you, you better not go out there, don't you sit your behind here at this house. You better not go no club. You in a meeting with your boss. And, and your boss say something that instantly you go from zero to a hundred and you get ready to give them the business. And as soon as you get ready to open your mouth, the Holy, you hear a soft, still voice say, uh-uh, don't you do it. You can't say that. You can't do that. Um, let me give you one other, one other example. Let's say your friends convince you to Mm, let's just say they trying to convince you to do something that you know is wrong. You know it's wrong, but they trying to convince you to do it. Here you go. You 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 get ready to do, and all of a sudden you hear, uh uh, that's not right. You better not do that. Nope, nope. Only the Holy Spirit will tell will convict a person when they get ready. That's why the Bible says, "Don't grieve the Holy Spirit." Only the Holy Spirit will tell you whether or not what you're doing is wrong. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside and he'll tell you, uh-uh, that ain't right. Nope, you better not do it. Let me share my story with you of my, uh, of my very first experience knowing it was the Holy Spirit. I was, at the time, I was working UPS part-time and I needed another job to make some extra money. I was going to school at University of Phoenix and I was going for my bachelor's degree in management at the time, right? So I was, um, I still needed money. I, I was only working part-time at UPS. So I need the extra money. So I took on this job at uh, this company called Fish Window Cleaning. As I'm sitting in orientation, all of a sudden, man, I had never felt this before something in the pit of my stomach this is where you when you feel a when you got a feeling in the pit of your stomach and it's just moving that's what the holy spirit is that's why the bible says um out of your belly shall flow rivers shall flow rivers of living water that's talking about the holy spirit the holy spirit is in the pit of your stomach so i just 
felt moving and moving and moving and moving, just like crazy. And all, and as it was moving, I could just feel like I don't belong here. I don't belong to this. I, I, I don't belong here. I should not be here. I shouldn't be here. But I didn't listen. I didn't listen to the warning that he was trying to give me. And because I didn't, I kept the, I kept the job. I kept working, right? Started working. And um, I was working UPS part-time. I was working fish full-time during the day. UPS at night, I was going to school, University of Phoenix, I was doing it online, which we know when you do online classes, it's a lot of work that you have to do. And especially in University of Phoenix, you, you literally have a paper almost every day to do. So I started uh, falling behind. And in University of Phoenix, you have a GPA that you have to maintain. If you don't maintain that GPA, they can expel you. And guess what? That's exactly what happened to me. I was expelled because my great, my, I couldn't keep up my GPA. I couldn't keep it up. So because I couldn't keep up my GPA doing this job and then during you doing UPS at night, I was expelled from school. If I hadn't listened to the Holy Spirit when I knew he was telling me I was not supposed to be there, I would have my bachelor's degree right now. I don't have it because, because of that. If I had listened to the Holy Spirit, I would have my bachelor's degree right now, but I don't have it. Be all because I didn't listen to him when he was trying to warn me. He was trying to tell me, no, Damien, don't you do this. If you do this, you're not going to be able to finish school because you're going to be too tired. You're working all day and you're working at night and you're trying to do school. And, and these jobs here, the window cleaning job, I had to drive my own car, my own truck. I had an F-150 at the time. I had to drive my truck to people's houses or these businesses cleaning their windows. So I'm doing that during the day. And then I come home, rest for a little bit. And then I was going to UPS at night. Where did I have time to work on school? I didn't, but I thought I could do it. If I had listened to the Holy Spirit tell me, the Holy Spirit was trying to warn me when I was in orientation. No, Damien, you need to leave. Get up from here, man. It's not working. It's not worth it, man. But I didn't listen. And because I didn't listen, I did not get my, my uh, bachelor's degree at University of Phoenix like I was trying to do. But despite me messing up, God was faithful and he gave me another opportunity of doing something else, which I'm blessed and I am so blessed to have the opportunity that I have now. I am because man, being a, I mean, yeah, I'm having to work harder, but my finances, there was no, in fact, my finances way tripled what I'm doing now. And I'm making the money that I make now. And I don't even have that bachelor's degree. I don't need it. I don't. It's, it's just a way of just saying God can take what's, what's meant for my bad. God will make it for my good. To, for, that's my example of that right there. But that's just a, a personal story that I'm sharing with you as to how the Holy Spirit will speak to you, speak to you, how he'll let you know. So that's why I say the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who's holding the Antichrist back. And remember, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit moves, that's when we'll learn the identity of the Antichrist. But it's the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, who's holding the Antichrist back. And we see here in Revelation 6, if it is the Holy Spirit holding him back, it has then there's only two people who can set it free, who can set the Antichrist free. The oh, three, I'm sorry, it would either be God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit has to move out of the way in order for the Antichrist to be revealed. What do we see? Jesus is the one opening the seal to release the Antichrist. In essence, we see Jesus opening the seal, releasing him. So when Jesus does that, what happens? The Holy Spirit then moves out of the way. So we see here, the Holy Spirit has to what? 
move out of the way so the antichrist can what he can he'll be revealed and then he can take over and do what he's supposed to do what he's supposed to do but we see here who's releasing him, jesus himself if the holy spirit is holding him back only jesus or god themselves would be the one to have to let him go have to let him loose so i wanted I want you to guy I want you guys to really see that. And and also there's another scripture I want to look at. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. This is what it says here. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I'm saying that to say I um, a lot of people ask the question, well, if the Holy Spirit moves out of the way for the Antichrist to take over, will the Holy Spirit still be around during the tribulation period? Yes, he will. Why I'm saying that? Because there are people who will be saved during the tribulation period. This is why I'm reading this scripture to you. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It's in black and white. You can't say Jesus is Lord unless the Holy Spirit lives in you. That's how you can tell if someone's really saved. You don't you don't tell by the you can tell by the actions. But listen to what they say. If they acknowledge Jesus as Lord, they have the Holy Spirit in them because that's what the Bible says. Only by the Spirit, only by the Holy Spirit can anybody say Jesus is Lord. Look at what happened with Peter when Jesus asked all his disciples, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ. What did Jesus tell him? He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. Only my father, which is in heaven, revealed that to you. Jesus, we see it. Only by the Holy Spirit can a person say Jesus is Lord. So I'm saying that to say, yes, people will be saved during the tribulation period. And if they are saved, if they're acknowledging Jesus is Lord, according to this scripture, they have the Holy Spirit in them because it's the only way you will ever acknowledge Jesus is Lord is by the Holy Spirit. That is how you can tell if a person is saved. Listen to their verbiage. If they acknowledge Jesus is Lord, if they acknowledge he is the Christ, if they acknowledge Jesus, that's how you know that that person is saved. Because only by the Holy Spirit can a person make that statement. That's the only way. You can't, if you, if the Holy Spirit does not reside on the inside of you, and we're looking at it in scripture, they're not saved. Because only by the Holy Spirit on the inside can you make that statement. So, yes, people will be saved. Look at the 144,000. We're going to get to them later on. They are a group of people who, paraphrasing, God will mark their forehead. So all the judgments that's being released on the land, because of the mark that's on their forehead, they will not be harmed by anything that's going on. And they will still be going out preaching the gospel, preaching, and people will be saved during that time. Now, being saved, however, is going to cost them their lives. Remember how I talked about on the other side of the world, being a Christian could cost you your life. When the Antichrist takes over, we over here in the United States, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to cost you your life. That's why you need to make sure that your salvation is secure now. So if the rapture takes place before you gonna be. You want to make sure you want to be on that train to get up on out of here before the Antichrist takes over. Okay, so guys, that is it for the identity of the Restrainer. I believe the Restrainer is the Holy Spirit. I don't believe it's Michael because I don't because we see Michael told Satan, "The Lord rebuke you in June." We know that it's a what according to the Scripture, and it's a he. So only one person matches that description, the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit is what's holding the Antichrist back. That's why he can't take over right now.
Okay. So guys, I love you. That is it for the our, this episode of the Restrainer. Before we go, you know, we're talking about um, only no one can say Jesus is Lord unless by the Holy Spirit. Peter said, "Repent, turn from your sins, be baptized in the name of the Lord, and you will receive what the gift of the Holy Spirit." There was a rapper today. Uh, he was twenty years old in Miami. I never heard of him before. But uh, he was coming out from somewhere and he was shot and killed, shot and killed, 20 years old, had had not even lived, just started living life at 20 years old, gone already. I'm saying that to say you never know when your time comes. I, I told somebody that's an appointment you will not be late for. You'll never be late for that appointment. You're going to make that appointment. That's one appointment that you're going to make. So it's so important to make sure that your salvation is secure. And as I said before, man, when you get when you feel the urge to come to the Lord, don't come to him thinking that all your problems are going to just poof, magically disappear, because more than likely they're not. If anything, I'm going to be honest with you, your problems going to probably increase. Why? Because then you make that jump from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. That's when Satan going to come hard to test you. Remember, after Jesus was baptized and received the Holy Spirit, what happened? He was the Holy Spirit led him to be tempted by the devil in the wilderness. That's what that is what will happen to you. When you make that, when you transfer from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, the enemy is going to come hard at you, harder than you ever thought, harder than you ever thought. But I will promise you this, the Lord will make it worth your while. That I can guarantee. I guarantee you that. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to bow your head with me and just pray this simple little prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a savior. Lord Jesus, I lay my life down for you. I ask to come into my heart. Make me, shape me, and mold me into the person that you've called me to be. My life is now in your hands. Lead me, guide me as you will. In the name of Lord Jesus, I pray and thank you. Amen. Guys, we're going to believe that if you pray that simple prayer, you have now transferred over from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We believe that now your salvation is secure. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And because of you, there is now a party in heaven that is going to happen because his son or daughter has come home. And I want to just tell you, welcome home, welcome back home, welcome to the family. And this also, now that you've accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, find you a good church home. Pray and ask God to lead you to where he wants you to put roots down. Because as we see, everything that says church is not church. Let God lead you to where he wants you to be. Ask him. He said, the Bible says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. He'll give it to you. So I'm saying, ask God and let him lead you to where he wants you to go. And he'll do exactly that. Well, guys, that's it for this episode, man, of um, The Restrainer. Next week, you know, I've been tap dancing around this whole abomination of desolation thing. I was trying to wait until we got to Daniel because when we finished Revelation, we're going to go to the book of Daniel because there's a lot of end time prophecy that's in Daniel that's not in Revelation. So we're going to go to Daniel. And then after Daniel, we're going to go to Ezekiel. But I wanted to save the abomination of desolation episode until we got to Daniel. But because it's so key for the Antichrist, and we're discussing the Antichrist, and I've been talking about it really since the very first episode. Now we're going to have, I feel like it, it, it's in our best interest to do it. So we're going to cover the um, Antichrist. We're going to cover, I'm sorry, we're going to cover the abomination of desolation, excuse me, next week. We're going to cover that next week. And um, I don't know, guys, you guys have to let me know. Um, do you want do you want to cover the mark of the beast now 
or do you want to wait until we get to it later on in Revelation? Because that's another key factor of the Antichrist. Do you so? Let me know on the Facebook page. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it up on the Facebook uh, Last Things Podcast Facebook page. I'm gonna ask the question. You guys leave a comment. Do you want me to cover the mark of the beast now? Or do you want me to wait until we get to it later on in Revelation? I'm going to let you guys tell me. If I don't hear any uh, comments or whatever, I'm going to flip a coin and we're going to call it as we see it. We're going to go from there, okay? So, guys, that's it for this episode. I love you guys. You guys have a blessed week. Be safe out there. Stay prayed up, man. And uh, on a personal note, spend some time with God, man. Spend, Spend some time in prayer, devotion, fasting, whatever you got to do, man, make sure your relationship with the father is intact. Put him first in all things, man. And he's going to make it worth your while. He'll lead you and guide you in every way. So keep God first in everything. Every decision that you make, everything that you say, keep God first. The Bible says only thing, only what you do for God will last forever. So my tip for you, keep God first. And you'll be successful at everything else. Guys, I love you. Have a blessed week. Be safe out there. And I'll see you back here next week with another episode of the Last Things Podcast where we are on a journey to truth. Love you guys. Be blessed. (music) 